Hello friends, welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from cgcave.com and today we are going to learn about the edge mode uh, under edit poly. To start, uh, let's create a box and let's work on this box uh, with the edge mode to see some theoretical uh, basic uh, commands or tools that we can use. And then I'm going to try to create this coffee table um, in this lesson, in this and the next lesson actually. Uh, using these tools we have learned. Uh, first, let's go over the theoretical stuff. Uh, let's turn this to gray, the color of this to gray, and then add an edit poly. And let's hit two to go to the edge mode. Now you can, if you hit two, you can see that you can select these edges. Let's hit F4 as well to see the edged faces, and then uh, we can uh, be sure where we are selecting. Uh, as you Remember from the previous lessons, one was the shortcut for vertex and two is for the edge mode. And let's select one of these. The um, one help, very helpful tool that we will use a lot is the ring tool. It's not under edit edges, but uh, we will use this one a lot as well. Uh, by the way, when we hit one uh, to go to the vertex mode, you remember that the um, tab was called edit vertices. And when you hit two, this tab is called edit edges now. And we have some new commands in here and we will go over these, uh, all of these uh, in a minute. Now, first thing is uh, I'm going to hit two, select an edge. And as I told you, if you hit ring, you will see that uh, it will select the parallel edges throughout the box. Uh, the shortcut for this is Alt R by the way, and I'm using this a lot, so uh, I wanna uh, stress this one more time. I'm going to just select this and hit Alt R and you can see that it will apply the ring uh, command or the ring tool uh, to the selection. Okay, the first uh, command I want to show you here is the connect tool. Uh, if you hit the connect tool, you will see that it will create a new edge loop that's connecting all the edges we have selected. Okay. But we didn't have any options or anything, so let's hit uh, Ctrl Z to undo the uh, step. And then let's click on the settings of the connect tool. If you do that, you will see that we can input some values in here and we have some uh, more options. Uh, if you increase the edge segments count, by the way, uh, as you can see, you can uh, increase the connected loops count uh, you, or you can decrease them from here. You can also just click and move up and down to go like this as well. Uh, let's uh, set this to two, for example. Uh, and the second command is the pinch value. If you increase this, you can see that the it increases the distance between the two segments or edges. If you decrease this, uh, it uh, brings them closer together. If you right click on the spinner, it will uh, turn this to zero, by the way. Uh, the third box in here is the slide a box. If you play with this, you can see that it slides the um, connected loops. If you hit OK, you can see that we have we created these new edges and you can play with them, you can move them around or whatever you want to do. The second tool I want to show you is the chamfer tool. We use this a lot. We we have heard this uh, heard about this tool before uh, before. Uh, as you remember, the uh, modifier chamfer applied applied this bevel or fillet to the edges. Uh, but uh, this one, with this one, you can um, chamfer the specific or selected edges uh, in the object. If I select this one, for example, and hit chamfer, I'm going to nearly always, like 90% of the time, I'm going to use the settings, by the way, not the command itself. Uh, this is, uh, uh, this uh, also counts for all the other commands in here as well, by the way. If it, if it has settings, I usually hit the settings button. Uh, you can see that you can apply a chamfer to the selected edge only. Uh, if you need this, you can also use use this uh, use it like this as well. You can increase or decrease the amount. We can increase the segment count. We can uh, tell it to smooth the chamfers only, for example, if you don't want to uh, smooth the faces. Uh, or you can just click this to uh, smooth the chamfer. Uh, unsmooth the chamfer as well. Okay, if you hit F4, you will see what I'm talking about. 
let's uh, hit the cancel button for this. Uh, usually we will use the uh, modifier, but sometimes this is uh, handy as well. Uh, you can uh, think of this as uh, you can apply this to the um, inner loops as well. Uh, by the way, if you double click on an edge, it will select the whole loop. Uh, there's a button for this as well. It's in here, near ring. There's a loop button. If you click this, uh, you can see that it's uh, selected the whole continuous loop. You can also double click for this. I guess double clicking is a little bit faster, <laughs> much faster maybe. And if you chamfer this, you can see that we uh, we can also create a chamfer for that edge as well. Okay. Uh, the beautiful thing about these, if you uh, apply these to loops or rings, you can see that uh, we always have quad faces, which is very useful for edit poly. Now the final tool I want to talk about here is the bridge tool. We we have other useful tools as well. I'm going to leave them to the next lesson, but the bridge uh, tool is also very important. Uh, let's hit 4 to go to the face uh, polygon mode and just select one of the polygons and delete it. If you have openings like this and you want to connect these two edges, for example, or these two edges, you can hit 2, select both of the edges with control, and then you can just hit bridge, which will uh, create a face bridging those two edges you have selected. Okay. All right, now let's go to our example. I'm going to uh, to delete the object, by the way. This is very important. Don't forget uh, forget this. Uh, uh, in uh, From my students, I always see this mistake. Uh, if you're under the edge mode and hit delete, it will only delete the selected faces or selected edges. Uh, what I want you to do to delete this object is to get out of the sub-object mode which you can do with clicking over uh, the edit poly or you can hit 2 again to get out of the edge mode then if you hit delete then it will delete the object itself so when you wanna delete an object you shouldn't be in a sub object mode that's the uh, gist of it I guess okay let's uh, see the model one more time our reference model uh, if you hit Control shift a in uh, pure ref, it will always stay on top. Even if this is activated, you won't lose the image. This is very cool. Uh, let's start with a box. Uh, I, I'm going to make up some dimensions, but uh, they are not uh, random dimensions. I'm, uh, I will assume this height is 45 centimeters or 40 centimeters. Uh, I've ch by the way, to learn about this, what, what's the average height for a coffee table, you can just Google it. I have Googled it before this lesson. so. I know that this uh, height is like 40 or 45 centimeters. For now, to think a little bit easier, uh, I'm going to keep this at 40 centimeters. Uh, if this is 40, this should be something like 50 or 45 again. So, um, and this ed for this side, I'm going to uh, assume this is 120 centimeters. I'm always like uh, comparing the edges. Like if I move this here, it should be it should end some. Uh, where like in here and so I'm going to add this uh, 5 or 10 centimeters uh, to the dimensions. Okay, let's grab the box tool and start with the box. Let's change the dimensions to 120, uh, 50 and for the height I'm going to uh, input 2. And you can see that we have a box like this. I want to move this up uh, 40 centimeters and it's uh, up there. Uh, then I'm going to create three separate boxes for uh, the top face because we have, as you can see, the chamfer in, is inwards in here. We have we do see a seam in here, so uh, I want to create separate boxes. Uh, I can just uh, input 55 for one of the edges, uh, one of the um, boxes. I'm going to hold Shift and create a copy of this and click on Instance to create an instance copy. Uh, then I'm going to hit S and move this in here. And then I'm going to hit S again because I want to uh, keep this closed if I'm not using it. I want to move this uh, minus, or let's move this one. I want to move this 10 centimeters in the Y axis. So I'm going to just turn this to a relative mode, uh, to the relative mode. And then I'm going to input 10 for the Y axis. And you can see that we have an opening in between. Then we can just grab the box tool again, hit S and create a separate box. Let's select all these and turn them to gray. 
and then let's uh, apply a chamfer modifier on top. Uh, I, I want to keep the amount uh, at 0.1 centimeters. I want to change the segments to 2 and I want to change the smoothing option to smooth chamfers only. This way I'm, I can see the seam in between as you can see. Okay. Uh, then I want to create these uh, legs. Uh, I I will assume these are not filled. Uh, I I will assume that they are like L uh, shaped uh, cross sections. They have L shaped cross sections. So I'm going to hit the T to go to the top view. Uh, hit G to get rid of the grids. I'm going to create a new box. I'm going to set the dimensions to eight by eight and uh, sorry eight by two. Even one, I guess and the height to 40. If you check out, check this from uh, the side view, you can see that it, uh, the height is uh, height matches the bottom face uh, of the uh, top plane. Then I'm going to hit T again, move this uh, in a suitable location. Uh, I eyeball lots of things uh, while creating models because this uh, is very, a very fast method for me. You can, all, of course, uh, try to measure uh, the distances or you can find these uh, dimensions online. But for me, I try to eyeball stuff and then I look at the reference and if the model I'm creating doesn't represent the reference model well enough, I will play with the dimensions. You will see this in a minute. I'm going to add an edit poly on top. I'm going to hit two again, select this edge, hit Alt R for the ring uh, command. And then I'm going to use the connect tool. And you can see that we created a new edge. I can just move this up, hit OK. Uh, I'm going to use some polygon commands as well, but I know that we haven't learned those yet, but um, as you can see, these tools are like in each other. You always need to use uh, a combination of uh, everything, not everything, but most of the tools. So let's ease into it. I'm going to hit four to go to the polygon mode. I can select this polygon. This is a very basic uh, thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to extrude this face and you can see that I can create a new face from that face. Okay, and let's uh, input six for the height in here. Okay, I'm going to hit T again and try to put this uh, I, I'm trying to keep this distance and this distance equal. Okay, I guess this is a good start. Now, uh, what I want to do is I want to add a symmetry modifier on top. Uh, first, let's add chamfer. As you can see, I'm uh, applying this chamfer to everything. Uh, actually, what one, one thing you can do very cool is you can just delete this chamfer and just grab the chamfer from here, right click, copy, and just let's paste it as instance, because I, if I change this uh, value, this will also change. And you can see that uh, right away we can apply the chamfer with a copy and paste, uh, with a simple copy and paste. Okay, now I'm going to select this, apply a symmetry modifier on top. Uh, you know about this tool, which is very powerful. If you wanna keep things symmetrical, this is the way to go. And I wanna, uh, it obviously mirrors or uh, creates the symmetry from left to right. So I want to flip this first. I want right side to mirror on the left side. And then I'm going to just click on the mirrored uh, sub object, which uh, the shortcut is one, by the way, for this. And then I can hit Alt A, which is the align tool. And you can just click on this box and place this to the center of the box. That way you can see that uh, we have a symmetrical uh, leg on the other side. Let's apply another symmetry modifier. Uh, let's change this to Y. Let's go, well, hit one again to go to the mirror mode. And then I'm going to hit Alt A again, and I'm going to align it to this one this time. And you can see that we have uh, four legs now. And the cool thing is if I go to edit poly, go to the vertex mode and change the shape of this one, you can see that because these are symmetrical, all of the shapes will change at once and this is very powerful. You, you will be able to see uh, the end result really quickly with this. Let's try to create this phase, which is the base, uh, which is the real challenge, I guess, uh, in this scenario, which is the reason we are using uh, Edit Poly, at least. I'm going to hit F for that, uh, or L, which, which will take me to the left view. 
and I'm going to create a new box. Uh, by the way, before you add chamfer, or you can, after you add chamfer, let's say, you can hide this from this button. And if you do, you will be able to grab the snaps more easily. Because if you add chamfer, you can see that we have a lot of new vertices here. So whenever you try to create a new box, trying to create uh, grab this snap, uh, it will be a little bit difficult to do. So I'm going to just hide this again, hit L. And I'm going to grab the box command and I'm going to just create a box uh, with these snaps. Uh, I have, uh, I input a random height for this. I'm going to play with it right now. Let's change the height actually to uh, minus two. And uh, of course this doesn't go all the way down here. Uh, I'm I want to pull this up a little bit. So I, I will assume this uh, portion is 10 or 12 centimeters, I guess. Let's try 10 and see what's happening and then we can change it later on. I can add an edit poly, hit two to select the edges. I'm going to select these bottom, these two bottom edges. And in the Z axis, I want to put this uh, to 10 centimeters. I guess 10 is good enough. Uh, it looks good. Let's, by the way, turn all the colors to gray again. Uh, if you don't want to do this all the time, you can use the clay mode, uh, which will help us see the model a little bit better. I guess let's uh, stay in this mode. Uh, it looks much better. And now let's try to create this uh, middle face. Uh, we are going to create the um, portion, the base model uh, from uh, with edge tools, edge commands. But then uh, when I want to create the um, insets and bevels in here, I'm going to use the polygon uh, mode and you will see what I do in a minute. I'm going to hit two in the edit poly. I'm going to select one of these edges and hit Alt R to go uh, to select this as a ring. You can hit Alt Q by the way to isolate this as well. You can see that if I select this one and hit Alt R, it will select the ring, the parallel edges. I'm going to hit connect settings, create two edges for this and um, increase the pinch value a little bit, hit OK. Uh, I'm going to select one of these edges, hit Alt R and connect again. And you can see that you can easily create a face in here. Okay. Uh, when I now when I look at the shape, uh, I see that I should select uh, go hit one to go to the vertex mode. Select all these vertices, hit R for the scale, and I'm going to just increase the distance in between a little bit. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now let's hit four. Uh, to go to the polygon mode and in this mode you, what you can do is you can extrude this inwards first i will input minus one for this hit ok i'm going to use a uh, bevel which will help me to uh, extrude the uh, face and also i can just create an inset you will see that it creates a bevel shape like this in here. Okay, let's uh, put this out one centimeters and let's uh, create the bevel 1.1 uh, minus 1.5 centimeters. Okay, I guess this looks good. Uh, I'm going to hit the, I'm not going to hit OK, I'm going to hit apply and continue, which will help me create one more bevel right away. And you can just uh, this time I'm going to input zero for the outline and then I'm going to decrease the extrude as well. I just want a small extrude in here. You, we could also use extrude for this by the way. And when you right click and, and isolate, you can see that we have this shape in here. Okay. Uh, now, so, uh, there are some things that uh, doesn't exactly look like this in here. I guess it's a little bit thinner. And um, the bevel in here should be a little bit, I should add to the bevel in here, I guess. To do, to do those, I'm going to hit one to go to the vertex mode, hit L again to go to the left view and select all these vertices. Then I'm going to just scale these down. And I'm going to just select these vertices and scale them down even further. And maybe scale these in in the x-axis as well. Let's check it now. 
Yeah, it looks better to me. You can uh, play with this even further, I guess. Maybe just one more edit is... Uh, I've isolated this again. Um, if you go to the front view, hit F3 to see the in inner sides of this. I'm going to hit one again and just grab these, pull these out a little bit and pull these in a little bit. Maybe even pull these in. As you can see, I can change everything <laughs> with Edit Poly, which is why I love uh, this tool. I use this for everything. <laughs> okay, now I guess this is close enough. Uh, maybe we can go to the sh default shading, see this in gray. Okay, now let's apply the same chamfer to this one as well. Right click, copy, and right click, paste instance. And you can see that we emphasize the seams and the uh, general corners as well. So this is very good. Use chamfer always and always, as I told you. Okay, I guess for this lesson, this is good enough. In the next lesson, I'm going to create the uh, other sides of this uh, coffee table. Uh, I hope this was useful. Thanks for listening. If you find this useful, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button, and see you in the next lesson.